everyone. Welcome to Serving Up Plumbing with David Butler. Today, we're gonna to be talking about parallel water heaters versus water heaters installed in series. Now, generally this could be two, three, four, five, six, seven water heaters installed. What we're gonna be mainly talking about is two water heaters. That means two installed in parallel or two installed in series. But first, please hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like this video today, and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see in the future. Now, let's talk about parallel versus series. I'm gonna start with water heaters in series. Now, one of the reasons I'm gonna do that is because we don't use it as much as we used to. Water heaters in series means that you go from the first water heater into the second water heater. That means cold water goes in the first water heater, the hot water comes out of the first water heater and goes into the cold water inlet of the second water heater. Then the hot water comes out of the hot water outlet of the second water heater and goes into the house. A lot of stuff in there, right? So what's that mean? The second water heater basically becomes a storage tank. Well, why do we do this? When we have two water heaters in series, we have pretty much a true 100 gallons of hot water. But the problem is, as you go from one heater to the other and all through the same pipe, we don't have a huge volume we can dump at one time. Now, this is where we get into a term we call dump load. When we're doing water heaters in series, it came in to be real popular in the 80s. And at that point in time, we were kind of transitioning bathrooms. You know, used to, if you had a house built in the 40s, 50s, 60s, unless it was an extremely expensive home, you had pretty much a basic bathroom. You had a tub, a toilet, and a lavatory. And they weren't real fancy or real big. But in the 80s, we came about and we had garden tubs. And we had what we call garden or Roman tubs that we needed a lot of water for. We went from a tub that used to hold 40 gallons of water and now we have tubs that hold 80 gallons of water. So we needed more hot water, didn't we? Well, they started putting the water heaters in in series, mainly in the 80s, to support these big bathtubs. But we still only had them on houses that were maybe two and three baths or two and a half baths. So we didn't have a tremendous amount of dump load, which means there weren't gonna be a whole lot of bathrooms being used at one time. We just needed a whole lot of hot water for that one big bathtub, right? So that's why we put them in series. The flip side of that is water heaters installed in parallel. Well, water heaters installed in parallel, you split the water pipe exactly and go into each water heater independently the exact same distance or as close as you can get on the cold water lines and the hot water lines. Water, of course, we always say takes the easiest path. So we wanna make sure and get everything as similar as possible. The length from the valves, the flex connectors, whatever we're doing on those heaters, we try and make it parallel, symmetrical almost, where everything on one heater is the same length as everything on the other heater. That way the water's not gonna be going more through one heater than the other. If you don't hook them up with everything almost exactly the same length, you're gonna have a problem with that. And one water heater is gonna do most of the work and we're not gonna have 100 gallons of hot water on 250 gallon heaters, are we? So parallel heaters are for that. The other thing the parallel installation gives you is a larger dump load. Remember I mentioned dump load a minute ago? Dump load means we can dump a lot of water at one time. That means if we have a five bath house or a six bath house, you can run more fixtures at one time because you're splitting the water going through each tank independently. Now, parallel versus series. We did series water heaters for a long time, but recently in the North Texas area, and this is likely not across the country, and there's a lot of smaller towns that this won't matter in. I prefer series water heaters on the homes that have two baths, three baths. But the code in the North Texas area has changed on that. Now the code says we have to run all water heaters in parallel. So if we're coming up on a house that has water heaters in series and we have to replace one heater or both heaters, we can't put them back in series. We have to change the plumbing configuration now to parallel. Now I know that sounds strange and as I said, there's a lot of places in the country you guys are gonna say, oh, well, we don't have to do that. We've never had to do that. And we never used to have to do it here up until about five years ago or less. And that's when 
the North Texas Code Council and the inspectors in our area and the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex decided they don't like it in series. They only wanted them in parallel. Now, you're going to say, well, why? What's wrong with it? Well, I agree to an extent, but what they said is this, or one of the reasons. Water heaters in series, as we said, the second tank basically becomes the storage tank, and the first tank does all the work of heating the water. Therefore, what's going to happen? That first tank's going to wear out faster than the second tank. Now, I'm okay with that because most people don't want to spend the money it costs to replace two water heaters at one time. So if they go out at different times, it at least lets you spread your money out, right? But the inspectors aren't quite okay with that because they said it wears one heater out unequally to the other heater. Now this changes when you have a recirculation system. Now we talked about recirculating systems a little bit, but in series on water heaters, my suggestion is that you run the circulating line into the second tank that is the storage tank. A lot of guys always run the circulation line into the first tank. Well, that first tank's already doing all the work already, right? So let's put the circulating line into the second tank and even out the work on the tanks and it'll make the life of them be more similar. Yes, will it wear out a tank sooner if you don't have a recirculating system and you're working it all through the first tank when they're running series? Sure it will, but again, that way you can also split up when you have to pay for a tank to be replaced, right? So I still like them in series, but our inspectors around here say I can't do that anymore. So we put all of our water heaters in parallel now. What does parallel mean? As I said, you have to make everything exactly the same or as close as you can get going into each heater, the distances of pipe going to each one and everything. Again, with recirculating systems, if we have a recirculating system on this one, we have two options. We can tie it into the drains of each heater at the bottom, and we have to tie it into both of them evenly and parallel, just like we tied in the cold and hot lines. If we don't, one tank's gonna be doing more work than the other. Water's lazy, water's gonna take that easiest path. So we have to make everything again parallel. So if you tie it into the bottom drains of each tank and you parallel it, they're gonna work really well. Just one pump, split the line parallel. The other option is you can tie it into the cold water feed that before it splits, going to each heater. That way you're pushing the water into the heaters equally with your recirculating pump coming back. In that case, you do have to put a check valve on the cold water inlet line before you tie in your recirc line. You also need to put an expansion tank on both heaters to protect it from thermal expansion because you're closing the system with that check valve. So, parallel versus series. Series water heaters started in the 80s. They give you a lot of hot water for a large bathtub, but not a lot of bathrooms. Parallel water heaters give you that higher dump load, which means you can run more hot water at one time without losing pressure or volume coming out of your faucets. Another option on recirculation for waters in series and in parallel is of course the comfort pump, which is the pump that you add when you don't have an existing system of a dedicated loop. The comfort pump on series and parallel water heaters goes in two different places. So if the water heaters are in series, the comfort pump is going to be on the hot water outlet of the second water heater, okay? If they're in parallel, the comfort pump is going to go in the hot water line after they come back together and tie together and for the parallel system. You just install the comfort pump on a mill adapter going right to the hot water supply to the house. Then you install the crossover manifolds under the furthest fixtures, two, possibly even three if you had to, and you'll have a hot water recirculating system where you never had one before. It's not gonna give you scalding hot water right away like a dedicated loop will, as we talked about in previous videos, but it will give you warm water and get the water there at least 50% faster than it used to. One thing I do wanna clarify, if you have existing water heaters in series and you're not changing either one of them, a plumber can repair leaks on the pipes connecting them, he can add an expansion tank, he can do anything to that, and they can stay in series. It is not required to be brought up to code if you're not changing out the tanks. But if you're changing out either one of the tanks, like the first tank starts leaking or the second tank starts leaking, if you change either one of the tanks, you have to bring them up to code and put them in parallel. Now again, this is in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. A lot of areas probably have not adopted this, but I work here and live here, here at Milestone in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and that's the code that we have to go by. Parallel is great for a larger dump load. 
Series is great for a large volume of water in one fixture. One last thing here. You might be thinking there, well, what if I've got a tankless? Do I have to do those in series or parallel? Well, when we go to tankless water heaters, and most tankless water heaters can be installed where you can install up to 12 all together. We call this cascading. So when you're putting tankless water heaters together in more than one, and what you do that for, again, is dump load. Because one tankless will give you about 10 gallons per minute. You put two together, now you can get 20 gallons per minute, right? So that's what we do it for, is to have a larger dump load and usually on larger homes. It's very rare you would put 12 together. That would be on something like an apartment complex or some type of commercial uh, installation. But if you are cascading tankless together, be sure and read your manufacturer's instructions. If you're just doing two, generally you're gonna do them some type of parallel type of installation. But if you're doing multiples, watch your manufacturer's instructions. Go read them. Follow them exactly. They have a lot of great diagrams for installing them. The series and parallel thing doesn't hold exactly true when you're doing tankless water heaters. So that helps you out with tankless water heaters. Tanks, whether they're electric or gas, are series and parallel. Understand, the same rules apply whether it's a gas tank or an electric tank. It doesn't matter. Gas and electric tanks, we hook up the same way, parallel or series, okay? A lot of plumbers, get confused when they start trying to do water heaters in parallel. Well, let me give you one quick tip. One of the best ways to do water heaters in parallel is go backwards. That means you start at the top of the tank. You don't start at the wall coming out. Start at the top of the tank, and most of the time we use stainless steel or copper flex connectors. So, put your flex connectors on your tank, make sure they're all the same length, and then work backwards until you get to your valves and you get to the T that ties your hot lines together and your cold lines together. It's much easier to work backwards doing it that way and make all your pieces and fittings the same size than it is to try and work from the wall out and split it up going the other direction. It just falls together easier. I'm gonna do a video in the future that will actually show us physically installing it and running it parallel backwards. I hope this has helped you out with knowing what the difference is in series and parallel and how to do it. We've had a lot of good photos on this video that show you different diagrams. You can always search series water heaters or parallel water heaters and see a diagram at the drop of a hat on your phone. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button and let me know the thoughts you have on parallel and series. I'd love to hear it. Thanks again for watching Serving Up Plumbing. And tell your friends, the butler did it. Or stew it, or stew installed stew.